Hello Augies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to answer a question from Joseph Clifton, KN4KDZ, and his question is very simple. My station is on the other side of my house from my power ground, meaning utility ground. Could I bury about 75 feet of number 6 wire around the house, and how many ground rods would I need to put in and how far apart. Okay, there's a couple things going on here. Um, let's just look at the whiteboard for a minute. He is in a house. His utility ground is here with his meter right here. Okay, and he's over here with his shack. And so he's got a ground rod here where he puts his lightning arresters and stuff like that and they run out to the various antennas. Okay? Now, he wants to bond this ground and this ground, and he would have to run about 75 feet of number six. I would recommend stranded, just because it, it, it takes RF better. Bare, this is important, bare wire, and you want to bury it. Bury, bare, spelled entirely different. Okay, if you bury it under here, the bare wire is acting as sort of a ground, but more optimally, you can put in additional ground rods every 12 feet or so. Okay, every 12 feet or so. And then this to this should be a crimp connection, and they sell these at... Uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that. Or you can use a welded connection. There are little uh, things with thermite in them. I can't ever remember the name of them. Little things with thermite in them. You put on that, you burn it, and the net result is that your wire is actually welded with copper to your ground rod. That's the best way of doing it, especially since you're going to bury this. This all can be buried. Crimp connectors, once you bury them, uh, you can't inspect them. So, uh, hard to see what's going on. But it needs to be crimp or welded, not soldered. Solder has a very low melting point. And if there were a lightning strike nearby, or even a direct strike, uh, the solder would instantly melt and go flying everywhere. Uh, so you want crimp or welded because these connections can handle a great deal of power to the point where they're red hot and yet it will for a very short period of time and yet they will still work. I would recommend if you're burying it you do the welded part. If they're going to be above ground you can do crimp like a hose clamp or something. Or better yet go down to Home Depot and get the proper crimp uh, fixture. Uh, and then if you put these grounds in, you are really well grounded, okay? And if you really want to go out, if you've got a tower here, you want to um, connect that to a ground rod too and run your number six wire over here too, buried, of course. So I think that answers your question. It's what you would like to do, how many ground rods. Put them about every 10 to 12 feet, maybe 15 feet around here. Um, you're going to have fun driving ground rods, but you will be very well grounded. That side of your house will be very well grounded too. Okay, so there you have it. Um, grounding is extremely important in ham radio. And one of the reasons, one of the practical reasons for doing it and using the lightning arresters is it does greatly reduce noise on antennas. Um, I had an experience with an HF9V. I had refurbished it. It was grounded out at the antenna and I brought it straight into my radio. And, oh, huge amounts of noise. And then I grounded the shield of it uh, on this end near the ground rod and oh man, the noise just went away. It was a, a great antenna for the time I used it. I have a different antenna in there now. Um, so now, if you have radials around an antenna, those radials should be connected to a ground rod and also bonded back 
to your single uh, ground here. Okay, so there you have it. We do have a giveaway going in October. Uh, please send, uh, well, let me first of all tell you what we're giving away. We're giving away this micro BITX radio from HF SIGS in India. And um, as a microphone, it will also do Morse code. It's QRP radio, and it's all assembled, all put together, ready to go on the air. Um, and I'll try to throw in some of the instructions and things like that. Um, it's not perfect as a QRP radio, but it does work pretty well. And it has a nice uh, computer interface with a, a screen up there where you can select different things and, and so on. So, um, to enter into that, send me a postcard QSL card or single uh, page letter in an envelope uh, to uh, Dave Kassler, KE0OG, PO Box 98. Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. And on that card, uh, or whatever it is, please put your name, call sign, and the address to which you would like this shipped, and your phone number, which I will call if I have any questions. And uh, I don't need your email or anything like that. Um, now, the winner's uh, envelope will be thrown in there into the package with that and sent back to the winner. All other entries will be destroyed. Okay, so I don't make mailing lists out of this or anything like that. And it's completely free. I will pay the postage. Um, please state site only because uh, that way the postage is reasonable. Um, trying to ship a package across the U.S. border is very expensive, so we'll have to stick with. Um, uh, the US only. I did have an Aussie once ask me if he could pay for the postage if he won and I guess we can do that too but I want to ship it for free because I want this to be truly a giveaway no cost to you it's not a raffle it's not a door prize it's not anything it's just I've got a bunch of stuff in the shack that needs to go I've got too much stuff up on those shelves there so there you have it. Please subscribe, click like, and until we next meet, 73.